In today's Tears of the Kingdom video, we'll take a look at three absolutely essential unlocks that you'll eventually need. These will come in super handy to be able to store more loot, gain new abilities and generally improve the quality of life of your time in Hyrule. Let's get started with the inventory upgrades and there are two ways to store extra items but I will first focus on the inventory expansion. Just like in the last game, you can use Korok Seeds to increase the number of inventory slots to hold more weapons, bows and shields. So before I show you a quick route for the seeds you should go for super early, you might want to go ahead and find Hestu. He can spawn in two locations depending on how much you progressed in the main story. The first one is on the hill on the way to the Linder Skyview Tower. He should be right here on the left side of the main path. However, if you progressed a bit in the main story, completed your first temple, he will eventually move to the lookout landing right here next to the general store. He even moves on to a third location later called the Korok Forest, but he'll tell you beforehand so no need to worry. Now this is the NPC we're going to give these yellow Korok seeds so that we can upgrade the inventory and we'll literally find these seeds everywhere in Hyrule. Many times it's as easy as lifting a rock or jumping through a circle of flowers while others require you to help these other Koroks to reach their friends as I'm sure you've seen plenty of. But early on here's how you can acquire at least 10 seeds from just above lookout landing and already get at least 2 extra slots for each inventory type. So starting from the lookout landing, head towards the Hyrule Castle and stop at the first wall on the main road. You'll want to use Ascent to get at the top and then immediately lift this rock to get your first seed. From this point on, you'll want to jump down to the left towards these yellow ruins in the green field. Inside, there's a stack of leaves that you'll want to set on fire and once done, lift the rock underneath to get a second seed. The third will be right here at the top of the broken fountain right in the middle of the main courtyard, so make your way there and either climb it or use a sand to reach the upper platform. Once done, again lift the rock and you'll gain another seed. Now at the bridge to the castle there are two seeds you can get really quick. One is on the left side in the water so you'll want to jump from the bridge right in the middle of the circle of flowers to get it. Once acquired, use a sand to get back at the main bridge and from this point on you'll want to climb this tower on the right side of the gate, so go ahead and do that. There's a midpoint you can use to rest before making your way all the way to the top. Once you reach the broken roof, there's gonna be another rock you can lift and this is gonna give you the fifth seed. There's a few more easy from this point on, also on the main path, so the sixth one is right here at the top of this tower to your right side. Once you reach the very top, you'll see a pinwheel so that you'll want to jump on the statue and look exactly in the direction that it's pointed towards. This will reveal three balloons that you can quickly pop for one extra seed. From this point on, you will want to head down this path onto the wall and then jump down on the main road. You will notice a gap in the road onto the right side, so jump through it at the bottom and complete this Tetris-like puzzle to make a perfect cube. From this point on, you will gain the seed, so you can go ahead, use the sand and go back at the top. From this point on, you can just go back towards the last tower and you will find the 8th seed by catching the invisible Korok that's running through this grass field in the gap on the right side of the main road. There's at least 2 more seeds in the area, including one at the end of this broken wall that I already got, and a 10th one at the very top of the main building where you also talk to the captain during your first mission in the area. You'll have to of course make your way to the very top of the roof and then climb this pole to grab a Korok floating around it. And this you should now have 10 seeds which lets you add 2 slots per stash right at the start by talking to Hestu. As you gain more space for each inventory, the cost will increase from 1 to 2, eventually 5 and even a lot more than that as you gain more and more. That's why if you want more Korok seeds, I recommend checking out this map right here that shows all the current known locations. As I've said, there's probably like dozens if not hundreds of them all around the map, so you can just consult it and grab them on your way. But now that you got more items to store, it's time to go and upgrade your pad to the next level. This will let you get the portable teleporter points, ways to scan for specific creatures and other great advantages. 
So for this, you have to complete the mini quest line in Lookout Landing for Robbie and Joshua, the same one during which you also get the photo mode and the auto build once you head in the depths region. At the end of which, Robbie leaves Lookout Landing for his research lab in the Hateno village. So once that side mission opens up, you will want to head over there, right here in the far east in the Nekloda region. You'll want to make your way at the top of the hill where his lab is located and have a chat about the other upgrades he can now offer. As soon as you do that, he'll give you a first one, which is the sensor upgrade, which now lets you know when you're close to a shrine as the signal will intensify and even make an audible sound as you're on the right path. You'll even have to use this to find a shrine in the cave beneath the lab to continue the mission. Also make sure that you go inside of it. Once it's done, it's very quick and you also get the magic scepter from the chest in the middle. However, once that's done, it's time for the upgrade, so go back and talk to him about the travel medallions. Next thing, he'll tell you about a prototype you can find right here in the Akala Ancient Tech Lab in the upper right corner of the map that you need to retrieve for him before he even gives you that upgrade. This is by the way the same spot that we use when infiltrating the Yiga Clan hideout from where we also got the Yiga Clan armor. Once ready, you can go back to Robbie and finish the side quest for him. But there are two more medallions that you can get on top, which you do by discovering all the 15 of the Skyview Towers in Hyrule. As I already got all of them, when I came back, this immediately finished the quest and gave me two extra medallions on top. And with these, you can get unparalleled advantage as you can now place teleport points manually into any of the harder to reach locations. Say you want to farm the Lynels in the Floating Colosseum on repeat, this lets you pretty much place it there so that you can fast travel whenever you want to. Or if there's a specific point that you cannot easily reach but visit often, you can just place one and then teleport back at your leisure. But there are still two very important upgrades you can get from Robbie. One of them is the Hero Path, which you can acquire if you discovered 15 Shrines of Light. You need these for the health and stamina upgrades, so you'll want to get them anyway. And once done, you can just have a chat with him again and you'll get the upgrade. You can access this by pressing X while on the map and it's actually pretty neat because it shows all the locations you have visited in your current playthrough with the more pronounced green lines being more recent while the more subdued ones being the oldest tracks that you followed. Plus, there's a neat way to replay your playthrough and see where you've been, what you've done and all that kind of stuff. So if you are a completionist or want like to make a fast path, you can totally do so. The third upgrade is better though and this is going to be Sensor Plus. To get this, Robbie will ask you to scan 10 different enemies, which is easy by simply using the camera and taking a picture of 10 different enemies out in the world. Once you're back, you can now set your sensor to instead indicate specific creatures, enemies or items that you took a picture of before but want to refarm again. This will come in handy if you're on the lookout for a specific material that only drops from certain enemies, so the sensor will alert you when one is nearby. However, there's one final unlock that you can also get from this quest line, which is the Compendium Database. It's in the same room, so you can use this to buy database entries in exchange for rupees, so that you don't have to take photos yourself. Probably a good money sink with all the duping going around at the moment and it can save you a ton of time but it's also going to be random so you will never know what the next entry will be. But this ladies and gents brings us to the last unlock which doesn't just give you access to even more extra stashes for your items but also a full blown house with access to all the tools that you need to make your life that much easier. So you get this via a short quest chain you can start right here in Terry Town, right south of the Akala Highlands. I recommend taking the rail car since you'll use this in the first quest anyway. From here you'll want to head over to the western part of town in this house and talk to these two NPCs to open up Madison's independent side quest. And this is actually quite brief, you just have to help these two NPCs prepare a surprise for their daughter before she leaves town. So once you have a chat with both of them, including with Hudson alone outside, you'll want to head over upstairs and talk to Madison herself. The next thing is to follow her outside as she'll make her way to this like elderly couple and make sure to pick the Vaba as the option in the dialogue pop-up. 
Next is to follow her to the nearby rail car and help her get to it without the operator noticing. There are a few options for you here, either pay the operator or obstruct their vision. In my case, I just use these puff shrooms, but you can also just place a wall in front of them and then talk to Madison, who will now take the rail car to the level below. For the last part, you will want to head over down where you will see that her dad made her an air balloon, but that he needs 10 sandalions to dye it yellow. Now, if you want these, you can easily find a lot of them in the Starring Sky Island as they are quite abundant over there. And once done, you can simply talk to him back, give it to them, and this is going to play a short sequence before finishing the main quest. And this is where you will want to be because as soon as that's over, you can now talk to Ronson again at the main house, who will tell you if you're interested in your dream home, and that there's a discount for a plot of land nearby where you can build your own house for just 1500 rupees. Since you get a ton of them from the farming methods we talked about before, you can go ahead and just buy this. Once paid, this opens up a home on a range side quest, which has you reach to this open area slash field right next to the town. From this point on, you can just talk to the construction guy, which will now give you two rooms you can already use to start building your dream home. However, once you place them and finish this quest, there are a few more rooms that I recommend buying from him, which will completely change your life from this point on. This includes the kitchen, which now gives you access to a cooking pot that's always going to be fired up, a bedroom so that you can always sleep here for free advanced time and also regain your lost health, and you can also buy a praying room which gives you the statues that you can grab more hearts or stamina at once you place these shards of light. The final ones I recommend buying are the weapon, shield and bow display rooms. I love these a lot because they basically act as extra stashes to place some of the items in the case you need them for later on. That can be super useful as you get more of them and it looks nice to have some of your best stuff on display in your own home. Yes, it will cost quite a bit to do this, a few thousand worth, but again, we have so many farming methods, you can easily achieve this in half an hour. And you can even set some stables here by to just have a horse ready whenever you want, plus the views are to die for. And with this, you're that much closer to the perfect setup, so that's pretty much it with the upgrades that you need. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.